Hey everybody, welcome back to Winnemac Tech Hockey. I am Dom DeBomb, joined by Jake the Snake Armstrong and Matt the Brat Cleveland. And today we are starting our new series of videos regarding the offseason of the NHL, starting with the Buffalo Sabres because they have the number one overall draft pick. And we will continue to break down each team and work our way up the ladder of draft picks. If you guys are new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. All right, everybody, let's get down to it. The Buffalo Sabres have the number one overall draft pick. They finished dead last in the league this year. They had their struggles, the 18-game losing streak. We all remember it. Sorry, Buffalo fans. I know, flashbacks. But, hey, we've got some good news. There's lots that the Buffalo Sabres can do this offseason. They have roughly $32 million in cap space that they can use to revamp this team that has some young talent. So let's hop right in here, and let's start with Jack Eichel, because everyone is wondering right now, where is he going to go? Is he staying at Buffalo? Is he going to get traded? Whatever the case may be. So, Matt, let's start with you. Where do you think Jack Eichel is going? Is he staying in Buffalo? Uh, I think he's gone. I think there's no, no doubt at this point. I think uh, his locker room presence has not been very great. Uh, I think his, his leadership needs a little bit of a tuning, and I think that will happen in another city. My trade proposal is I think he goes to Minnesota. Minnesota, an up-and-coming team, a team that I think is going to need to be competitive next year when they go back to the Central, as that division is always a dogfight. And I think getting a player, a franchise player in Eichel would be huge. And I think that trade, I think their young player in Erickson Eck, the center, I think they can send him over there, 24 years of age. I think he had kind of a breakout season this year. It wasn't a lot of points, 38 points in like 60 games. so I Or 56 games. But... uh. I think that's another player. I think a first-round pick has to be put in because I think Eric Eck alone isn't enough. And I think they give a guy an Ian Cole, a good defensive defenseman that I think Buffalo would want, especially to go aside a lot of their offensive defensemen. And I think that trade alone, I think it could do it. And I think with a player like Eichel, I think Minnesota could do things next year. And I think it would work out well for Buffalo as well. All right, Matt. So you have Eichel going to Minnesota, who is a breakout team this season. That's interesting. Jake, what do you think of uh, what Matt had to say, and where do you think Eichel's going? Okay, so to recap on what Matt said, he said Eichel going to Minnesota in exchange for Erickson Eck. Erickson Eck, a first, and Ian Cole. Okay, so that makes, yeah, that's, you know, something I didn't think about. It makes sense. I also don't think that Jack Eichel is going to stay, which is unfortunate if you're a Buffalo fan. Because I'm fairly certain he started out as like number 11. And then when Evander Kane got traded, Eichel took the number 9. And then, so if you're a Buffalo fan, you've already bought the New Jersey once. And then he gets the C and you have to buy it again. <laughs> and then they just get rid of him. So now you have like three jerseys that you have no use for. Uh, anyways, my trade here is Jack Eichel to the Seattle Kraken. Mm -hmm. But not just Jack Eichel. They're cleaning house here. There's a huge contract weighing down that team right now. It's Jeff Skinner making uh, $9 million until 2028. Buffalo, what were you thinking? He had one good year. So Eichel and Skinner to Seattle. So you get that really good player in Eichel, and then Skinner is just a throw-in cap dump. Seattle has the space to do it. In exchange... For the second overall pick. So I think Seattle says, if they, if you look at the draft and you're Seattle, you say, well, I haven't really been able to scout this year. We know Jack Eichel is a great player. Let's make it happen. So essentially it's a cap dump and Jack Eichel in exchange for the second overall. Mm, I, I like that a lot. Um, man, you got a good point with Seattle there. Um, and that second overall pick is valuable. Do you think that Seattle would need to throw in more than that pick? Matt, what do you think? I don't think they'd have to throw in more than that. I like that. I like that exchange. I think it would go through for both sides. I think if you're looking at it from Seattle's perspective, I think they'd love that. Do you? Uh, if you think about it, would Seattle get a player with that second overall pick that's better than Jack Eichel right now? I, I highly doubt it. I, I think that's very a very, very low possibility. 
And for Seattle, I mean, or and for the Buffalo at the same point, you get a second overall player, you pretty much just get to restart and you get rid of all of that cast base. Because remember, Eichel's making 10 mil as well. So you're getting rid of huge contracts in Eichel and you're getting rid of huge contract, a huge contract in Skinner. I think it works out for both sides and I like that one. There is definitely a lot of options. The only thing that makes me nervous is if you're Buffalo, the way things have been going, as soon as you get rid of Justice Skinner, he returns to 40-goal form and makes you look awful. But you don't have to pay that much money for him. And yeah, he may return to 40-goal form, but who's to say he doesn't have another one-year wonder, has one good year with Seattle, and then have another me mediocre-type season for the rest of his career there in Seattle. They still have to pay a lot of money. So it's a lot of what-ifs, obviously. But I like it. I think it's yeah, a good situation. Yeah, I, I do think... Thank you. I do think that uh, Buffalo is making a safe would be making a safer play by getting rid of Jeff Skinner. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, I like the thoughts on the Jack Eichel trades that you got going on there. I think those are really logical and very well could happen. Uh, so let's talk about the rest of the roster, though, over there in Buffalo. I mean, yeah, they had a tough season. They still have some bits and pieces that are something they can grow with. What do you guys think they're going to do? Uh, who's leaving? Uh, trading? What do you think they're going to do with the current roster? Jake, let's start with you. All right, so first off, uh, Rasmus Ristolainen is a guy who's been on that team for a while now. He was kind of trusted to lead that offense and be the guy on the back end, and he hasn't been able to get it done. I think it would be best for both him and the team if there was a trade to get him out of there. I don't particularly know which team he's going to go to. I'm sure there's a lot of teams that could be interested in a player like him. Uh, just one of those teams is not Buffalo at this point. Uh, and in their in terms of their other free agents, they've got a lot of their young guys, like uh, RFAs, like Casey Middlestad is a forward for him. He could be a top nine guy at least. They'll probably keep him. Uh, Jake McCabe is a UFA. I imagine they'll sign him for some low contract. Uh, nobody that big is going to be a free agent this year for the Buffalo Sabres, other than Sam Reinhart, who I also think they will not have on their team next year, but I don't think they trade him right away. I think they wait, see if anybody gives them an offer sheet, try to get him to a low contract first, and then trade him. Regardless, I think they try to give him away. He's making five mil, that's a lot. He's been a solid... 50 plus point player roughly since 2016-17. He was a second overall pick in 2014, so he's got some value. I think they should they could get some younger guys. He's still a young player, but they could get even younger and fully commit to this continuous rebuild. Yeah, uh my one thought here is you have a lot of the core guys in Buffalo walking out the door. Do you think of everyone that you have leaving that he would be most likely to stay out of all of them? Uh, you're talking about Sam Reinhardt? Yes. Uh, honestly, I don't think he stays. I think he goes. He's kind of in the same boat as Ristolainen where he could use a fresh start. He's tired of losing. Jack Eichel is the exact same. They're tired of losing, and really that's not good for a locker room. The locker room's not going to get any better because they're not going to be great overnight. It's going to take a while, and you need players who are willing to stay for that rebuild. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, Matt, what are your thoughts? Uh, what did you think of, of Jake's thoughts? And who do you think, what do you think Buffalo does with their current roster? Uh, I agree with a lot of what Jake said. I think uh, Casey Middlestat, like he said, I think he's a guy who, for the future, could be a pretty decent dude. Maybe not ever a star center for them, but I think he could give them decent production as a top nine guy. And I think they keep a guy like him. I think they keep a guy like Rasmus Dahlin. Again, I think... Him being restricted, I think they give him a bridge deal, some type of thing to keep him going. I agree with uh, Jake with Sam Reinhart. I think you do give him a restricted free agent offer. Um, I don't think you give him any type of crazy contract, but I think you, at most, just give him an offer out there if somebody takes him, especially with where his point's at, about 5 mil. If somebody goes at about that range and they give him a contract like that, that, you get a first-round pick or a third-round pick for him this year. And I think that's huge for their team, so... In that situation, I think you let him go, even though he was probably their best player this year. Um, I think at that point, you pretty much have to keep going with it. You have to 
you have to decide to let him go. I think players like Reeder, Kajula, Shaheen, all the low guys, they didn't really have great seasons. I think they all leave as well. Unrestricted guys. I think Matt Irwin had a really bad year. And with him being a veteran, 33 years old, I don't think he comes back. And I think definitely their goaltending. Their goaltending needs a lot of shape up. I think Linus Allmark was really good this year. He only played 20 games, though. So um, in that situation, I think he goes and he tries to find a spot where um, he'll be able to get paid. And he either gets paid here or he gets paid somewhere else. I think he's probably the guy, if I had to pick the person most likely to stay on, I think it probably would be Linus Allmark. But I think he leaves, and I think a guy like Carter Hutton, I think he leaves as well. He wasn't very good, so I think they have a lot of retooling to do in that back end and in goal. And I think, for the most part, it's just about getting those young guys up. I gotcha. So, what I'm hearing is you guys are saying that Buffalo is stripping absolutely pretty much everything here. They are going to start from the bare backbone. So, on that note... With free agency coming up, who do you guys think that Buffalo is going to target? I know their offense struggled. Their defense could use some help. Their goaltending. I mean, everything is up for grabs. And there's some pretty key names coming into free agency this year. Jake, let's start with you. Who do you think Buffalo targets? All right, so once again, I think they're committing to the rebuild. I don't think they try to make the team a win-now team. Like, they're not going to sign any big, like, 20 five to 30 year old guys that can make them competitive. I think they stick with their young guys, give them as much ice time as possible with this small exception. I think they make one big signing in free agency and that's Tyson Berry. I think he's an offensive defenseman who's been good in the league for a while now. And I think he would be a good mentor for Rasmus Dahlin, who personally I think they should commit to. Jack Eichel is not the centerpiece of this team anymore. I think it's going to be Rasmus Dahlin, and he needs someone who can mentor him to reach that next level. And I think someone as cheap as Tyson Berry, who made $3.75 million this year, sign him for four mil in Buffalo. You've got the room. Give him a year or two. He could be a role model for Rasmus Dahlin, and that's just good for your team. I like that signing. Uh, not only does it add a, a really good defensive player who's been in the league a while, like you said, but he has that offensive mentality too, which could really help the offense that has struggled this past season. Matt, what are your thoughts? Um, I think they retool pretty much everywhere, uh, whether it's the offense or the defense or net. And I think it starts with the offense. I think if they want to get crazy, they can go after a restricted free agent like Kevin Fiala, who's like 24 years old, coming off a really good year with Minnesota. I think they could probably snatch him away if they want to go for a guy that can really up their offense, but they'd probably have to pay a pretty penny for him, so I don't know about that. Uh, they could go some, for some... One sec here, yeah. Matt. I just want to point out something that I found interesting. Honestly, not a bad option for them is Fiala, but based on your other offseason recap, something that you saw happening was a trade with Minnesota. So, like, Buffalo and Minnesota understand, like, we're two teams, we want to get better. And then all of a sudden, Buffalo's like, yeah, this forward that you have, we're going to steal him from you. Well, I think when you have a guy like Jack Eichel going their way, I think they'll be able to switch uh, Kevin Fiala and Jack Eichel and feel pretty good about themselves. Yeah, so. just brush it right under the rug. It didn't happen. Yeah. And I think in that same breath, I mean, guys, I have two dudes that could be possible targets in the uh, forward market from Tampa. Guys like Blake Coleman, guys like Barku Goodrow. Yeah, they're good glue guys there in Tampa, but I feel like if they want to play a bigger role, they can go to a division, well, I wouldn't say division rival, but a division foe in Buffalo and they can get a lot more ice time than what they're getting in Tampa more than just playing on the power play and stuff like that and I think defensively they need to get defensive defensemen they need people who can block shots who can intercept passes and who can do things in the defensive end so Darlene can shine and so Ristolainen can shine and I think guys like Patrick Nemeth who's played really good this year with Cal McCarr there in Colorado and I think guys like Eric Stahl I know he's ex I know he's pretty old but that just makes him cheaper and make him a better option for them. He played pretty decent for Detroit down the stretch. And like uh, Alex Glowagowski there in Arizona, I think he's the same type of player, all defensive defensemen, all guys who I think are pretty good at their position. But I think most of all, their goaltending needs reshaped. And I think they do bring, uh, end up bringing up the prospect goalie they got in Uka Pekka, uh, the young guy yeah. there. Uka Pekka Lukonen, sorry to interrupt you, but I'm just saying, I think I know where you're going. He's going to be elite. 
Ukapeke Lukonen for the Calder and for the Vesna next year. You heard it here first. Okay. Well, I wouldn't go that far. And I think what would help his development, though, if he wants to go on the Vesna race is getting behind a young, uh, older guy who he can mentor behind. And I think a guy like Antti Ronsa could be a guy like that. He's 32 years of age, kind of got phased out there in Arizona. And you're thinking, well, maybe that might happen here. But at the same time, I mean, really, he never really had that much of a chance to be the number one goalie in there in Arizona. Right when it looked like Arizona, uh, Antti Ronsa was going to be the guy, they get a dude named Darcy Kemper come out of nowhere and play really well for them. They kind of phased him out, and he became the second dude, and he's going to become a free agent, and I don't think Arizona brings him back. So I think uh, Antti Ronson could be that dude, and I think Dave Riddich. He was traded from Calgary to Toronto, and I think with that situation, he was traded because obviously Freddie Anderson went down, and I think with Freddie Anderson coming back next year, and I think obviously Jack Campbell playing the way he did, they're just not going to bring back Dave Riddish. So I think if he wants another chance to start the league again as the top goalie, at least for next year, I think Buffalo is a big situation for him to show everybody what he's got. So those are my picks. Man, you guys really hit everywhere across the board. Offense, defense, goaltending, Buffalo fans. It's going to take some time, all right? Unless you guys kind of pull a Minnesota and kind of come out of nowhere with some really young guys. But hey, it may take a couple years, but we feel you out here. The hockey community, we feel you. We feel bad for you. We hope your team gets better soon. Um, and we hope that the roster continues to grow and get better. Uh, but guys, I, I have to ask this because it's a question that everyone asks when your team is doing poorly. Is management an issue over there in Buffalo? Um, I think they've already made a few changes. Jake, do you think that there's going to be a lot of management uh, that's going to change too? Okay, so I don't think you blame this on the coaches. They've changed coaches a few times here and there. I don't think it's the coach's problem. I think by getting rid of GMs at the rate that they have, they've shot themselves in the foot. I looked into it. Tim Murray was their GM from 2014 to 2017. 2017, he gets the axe. Jason Botterill, 2017 to 2020. 2020, he gets the axe. Then now they have Kevin Adams. Just came in in 2020. It's already 2021. Next year, it'll be 2022. Does he get the axe? I don't know, but they don't, they're not giving these GMs enough time to get the team set. They have a plan going, and then all of a sudden, they bring somebody else in. He doesn't know what ideas that other GM had, so they're kind of starting over, and that's probably why they've had these issues with the rebuild. I say just have Kevin Adams do his thing, give him a longer amount of time to get it done. Well, I mean, at this point... You're hoping for something. I mean, you got to put your trust in somebody before too long. You're not going to take a team that's in a rebuild to winning a Stanley Cup in a couple of years. That that doesn't typically happen. Uh, Matt, what do you think? Is management to blame here? I'd say definitely. I'd say with a lot of what's going on, I think the bridges that they burn with their top players and Reinhardt, Ristolainen, and Darlene, obviously Jack Eichel, I think a lot of that stems from the fact that they're sick and tired of having to go through coach to coach to coach. They're sick and tired of having a new GM making new decisions every day that's ruining the chemistry of this team. And I think before long, they're going to have to find a young coach. With the situation that this is going, they're going to probably be going towards a lot of the youngsters, and they're going to rebuild pretty much entirely. And they're going to have a lot of young guys up there. And I think finding a good coach, maybe their AHL coach now, depending on how good he's been doing the last couple seasons, or maybe somebody from another AHL team, a young coach, or maybe an NHL team that's letting a young coach go. Who knows? But they need a young guy who can glue with the younger players and can build camaraderie and chemistry and help this team for the future. That's what they got to do. Yeah, I mean, you guys bring up a great point. I mean, the players have got to feel like they're walking on eggshells. They walk in the locker room one day, things might be going great. The next day, you know, something big happens in the building and it just throws off all the chemistry. And as we all know in hockey, Chemistry is super important. You can have a great roster, but if they don't work well together, it's not going to work. Uh, so they got to figure something out there in Buffalo to get that chemistry together. That, so, guys, we've discussed that 18 oh, ahead, game losing streak was the most consistent Buffalo has been in years. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Sorry, Buffalo fans. Uh, but he's on to something there. And you guys know it, too. You guys all know it out there. Uh, and like I said earlier, we're hoping that things get better. And uh, what we just talked about, these are things that we think that would make the team much better. So on that note, guys, 
Buffalo next season. They're going back to the Atlantic. They've got a lot of competition over there. Uh, where do you see Buffalo ending up at the end of next season? Jake, let's start with you. Uh, last. That's all. Just Dead last in the league or the division? Oh, division. Division last. Uh, haven't really put thought in the league, but looking at the Atlantic teams, last for sure. Not even close. Matt, how about you? Uh, yeah, I think last for sure. I think with the way Detroit's bounced back and with Stevie Eisman in the helm being a better GM for them and Ottawa seems like they're on the right track, those are the only teams to really come close to them. So, yeah, I'd say they keep eighth place there in the Atlantic. Yeah, you know, I unfortunately I have to agree with you guys. Uh, at best, they finish seventh, and that's if Ottawa and Detroit take a step back. Uh, but like you guys said, both teams have – shown some good things throughout the season even though they didn't finish very well but yeah they got some good things going for them buffalo is like right smack dab starting over rebuilding again so it's tough it's tough i don't know i I mean i'm gonna go with eighth as well i mean that's my pick ultimately but who knows you might find yourself in seventh if you win a couple of key games but um any other comments guys as we wrap up our discussion on the buffalo sabers and what they need to do to get back in it in this rebuild. Uh, yeah, last thing is the draft. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so according to my prediction here with that Seattle trade, I think they're drafting number one overall and number two overall. So first off, I don't think they look at Owen Power, and they, they don't need that defender. They've got Rasmus Dahlin. I think they look at Matthew Beniers, the undisputed best forward in the draft. He's a center. Uh, you're getting rid of Jack Eichel. You replace him with Matthew Beniers. Maybe he's even as good as Eichel, and you get rid of Jeff Skinner in that trade, and it's like it never happened. Uh, and then number two overall, I think they get William Eklund, who is a left wing. He is a creative forward, good passer. He can make plays. Maybe him and Beniers become that top offensive line in a couple years from now. Yeah, I like that. Drafting for the offense, you know what the issue is over there, so you go get it, or at least you hope you go get it. Matt, what do you think? you have any thoughts on the draft? Yeah, I think with that first pick, I think they go defenseman, but I don't think they go with the consensus Owen Power. I think they go with the guy from the Burning Colts there in the OHL. I think they go Brant Clark with the first overall pick. I think he's a really productive player, and I think in a better league than Owen Power, he's shown more production, and he's been a player plus or minus guy, been an all-around dude, and I think he's got the makings to be a star. And then also, uh, I had them making the trade with Minnesota to send Jack Eichel over there, so I, with Minnesota having the 21st pick in the draft, around that point, I have them going with a guy who his brother has done pretty good in Chicago, and he may need more time to get to where his brother's been in the situation. But I think Colton Dock from Saskatchewan over there, I think he's a big center, 6'4", almost 200 pounds. I think he's a guy who can play wing. He can play center, and he's gave a pretty good production there. And I think he could be a really good guy that they could play pretty much everywhere. And those are two good guys they can build for the future with. Wow, that's interesting. Jake, you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I think that's, you know, good options but I think if you have number one overall Matthew Beniers is just the perfect replacement for Eichel it's just like you can't look a gift horse in the mouth and not pick Matthew Beniers but we'll see what happens Uh, I think Matt had some good ideas as well Uh, we'll have to see where Buffalo management goes with it yeah you never know in the draft sometimes the first overall pick is a no-brainer becomes a superstar other times they fade out Um, so who knows who knows I will say this year more than any other year, uh, the first round pick I feel like could be anyone. I don't think there's any uh, consensus guy. I think there's consensus. Uh, I think there's the best dude at each position, but I don't know about the best player in the draft is a hundred percent. I think that more than any other year, there really hasn't been a guarantee, and it's going to be exciting to see what happens. Especially a few years from now, when these guys who may have been drafted second, third round, they just didn't get scouted enough, and all of a sudden they're stars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every pick in this draft is more valuable than I think they have been in previous drafts. That is that is an absolute fact. All right, guys. Well, hey, again, I'll ask any more thoughts or concerns regarding the Buffalo Sabres. Buffalo Sabres fans, hang in there. It'll get better. It will get better, at least we hope. <laughs> 
All right, hey guys, thanks for tuning in and checking out what this video is all about. Please be sure to hit us up as we continue this series. And next will be the Seattle Kraken because they have the second overall pick in this draft. So you don't want to miss that. Guys, we will see you next time and be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Wow, wow.